And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Advent is a time of watching and waiting. It's a time of expectation, longing and hoping for the coming of our Saviour at Christmas. But it's also a time when, traditionally, we think about the four last things, death, judgment, heaven and hell. That might seem rather morbid as the whole world around us is hurrying onward with Christmas festivities. There's a sense that in this most difficult of years, people need Christmas to come earlier than ever. It feels as though nearly everyone I know has decorated for Christmas already. And on our televisions, Tesco's cheery adverts tell us there's no naughty list this year. Tesco, it seems, has cancelled the concept of sin. So why think about the last things? Why turn our minds to death, afterlife and divine judgment when, for many of us, thoughts about our own mortality have been on our mind since the beginning of the pandemic. Why not, like Tesco and every other major corporation, cancel Advent and move straight on to Christmas, to festive meals, presents and carol singing, and perhaps even rejoicing in the coming of Christ to dwell among us? The answer, I think, is to do with hope. In this season of Advent, we await two comings of Christ. The first, which we all know well and are reminded of each December in carol services and nativity plays, the coming of Christ as a tiny baby to embrace fallen humanity and dwell among us. The word made flesh, Emmanuel, the coming of Christ, which has already happened and which we celebrate each year at Christmas. The assurance of what the people of God hoped for throughout the ages, foretold by the prophets and promised to a people in exile. But we mustn't forget that Advent is just as much about another expectation. In this season, we also turn our minds to the second thing, which Jesus predicts in today's Gospel reading. He says we shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when Jesus Christ comes again in glory to judge both the quick and the dead, we shall know that our redemption is drawing near. The second coming is not just about judgment. It's not just about mortality and the time when God will look at each of us, at the lives we have lived and the love we have or have not shown, though that will surely happen. The second coming is also about redemption, for judgment is how God saves us. We can relate Christ's second coming and all of the last things, death, judgment, heaven and to Christ's first coming in the incarnation, if we remember that they are both fundamentally about hope. In today's collect for the second Sunday of Advent, we pray that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. The Collect beautifully defines for us the meaning of Christian hope. It is our trust in and desire for lasting life with God in the kingdom of heaven, given to us in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. We pray not just that we may have hope, but that we may embrace and ever hold fast to that hope. A hope which is entrusted to us in the promises of Christ, revealed to us in scripture. And through this prayer, the Collect acknowledges 
a fundamental truth about hope. Hope isn't something we can earn through our own strength or striving. It relies on the grace of the Holy Spirit, for which we must pray each and every day. Traditionally, hope is considered one of the three theological virtues which we read about in 1 Corinthians. St. Paul says, And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. They're called theological virtues because God is their object. They are directed towards him, are infused into our souls by him, and they are known to us by his divine revelation to us in the Bible. And they are given to help us live in relationship with the Holy Trinity, which is to say, God known to us by faith. and faith will pass with heaven and earth when Christ comes again in glory. We must we must ask daily in all our prayers, but God's prayer which leads us to desire. It's worth it means to when we refer to hope in ordinary speech. Christian isn't the same as optimism, hoping for the best, a sort of blind confidence that everything will be all right, not grounded in anything other than a vague wish that things will turn out for the good. That leads to disappointment. hope in Christ. It's the only hope in which we cannot be disappointed, because the hope we have is an anchor for the soul, both sure and hope in Christ looks both backwards to the redemption because Jesus first came to redeem us in the incarnation, because he made a full and perfect atonement for our sins on the cross, because he destroyed death by dying and rising again on the third day. I hope because his coming is a fulfillment of the promise made to God's people in the great prophecies of scripture. The root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles. In him, the Gentiles shall hope. In Christ, we see that God never breaks his promises. And above all, hope in Christ always points to everlasting life, to the redemption he so longs for us, to the nearness of the kingdom of heaven to all those who trust in him. The kingdom of heaven draws near. And when Christ comes at Christmas and again on the last day, let us welcome him with thanksgiving for the sure hope he has promised us in the gift of eternal life. And may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen.